Hello, Pastor Deborah here, and welcome again to another part of my dear spiritual child letter from me, not me, but from me, Agape Love himself. Welcome again to the garden. You know, we're recording through Zoom Pro with a motion video by Pixabay, and I'm not using a green screen. So weird things will happen around my hair. My hand could just sort of disappear and my background may come through. In this part of the letter, let me see what part it is. It is part number 42. Mm -hmm. And it's a poem, rather a song called Amazing Grace. I used to send this out. And the story behind it is a wonderful story, which I'll tell you in just a minute. But first, welcome, welcome to the garden today. Look at this wonderful video. Now, you know, I'm in my living room physically, but no green screen, but that's okay. And I may not be real clear, but we will get through it. This wonderful song was written by a wonderful man, and I'm going to tell you the history of it. And I would send this out to people. Mm -hmm. So let's pray before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Pixabay and Zoom and YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, for all of their platforms that help get your message out. We thank you, Father, for the creators of this wonderful video. And Father, we thank you that you touch lives, you change lives, and you put, have them put their lives to songs and poems, artwork. They write books, testimonies, and they become witnesses of you and your great love for them. So help us now to understand you, agape love, and how you work mm -hmm. in this next portion of my dear spiritual child letter from you, agape love himself. Help us through your Holy Spirit to see the power of love and forgiveness from this one man's life. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, as I said, this was a song that was written by a man named John Newton. Mm -hmm. He was a captain of a slave ship. He would transport African slaves to the New World or to other places. Now, his story was he was raised, believe it or not, as a child with God. But he got way off down the wrong path into being a captain of a slave ship. And there are some wonderful people who sing this song. What happened was his conscience became alive. It had gotten seared over by greed. But over time, he would hear the cries of the slaves on the ship, their moanings and groanings. And God finally got to this man, John Newton, and he gave it up, came back to God, got off that path. He actually became a minister, a pastor. And he wrote down this, and this was his testimony of his life. And people have put it to songs. I think I have some on the website. It's beautiful. But it's his testimony. And you have to understand that no matter how deep and far away from God and his love for others you go and how evil and wicked you become, he will work through circumstances in your life to reach your conscience of your soul, to reach your spirit, and to set you free. So listen to his song called Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. Grace was forgiveness. Mercy compassion that John Newton felt on himself. He carried the shame and the dishonor, the guilt of what he had become, a captain of a slave ship. 
And he could no longer ignore the cries out of the darkness of the ships of these people. He didn't know them. He was a captain making money. People were just products to be sold, just like cattle. And at that time in history, and through most of history, even now, having slaves was normal. We have them in human trafficking. We have them in for businesses who want cheap goods, so they hire cheap labor. Sometimes if you look at even businesses that hire sports players, they're just slaves. Mm -hmm. Pay them well. Sometimes parents want slaves, people, children to take care of them. People are products to be bought and sold, used, thrown away, grown again, so to speak, like in the Matrix. Mm -hmm. People are pleasure objects. They're objects of your fortune, objects to be used to make money in prostitution. Oh, they aren't worth much. It can be killed, thrown away, destroyed, because more are always growing inside of a woman's womb. Oh, even those children in there, they can be killed for science, stem cells, research, money. Humanity has always done that in our evil, wicked soul and our spirit. We have looked at each other not through eyes of love or love our neighbor. Some can. We will kill to save others. So we have become a mess, just like John Newton. Nothing's new. Don't think slavery's gone away. Mm -hmm. We'd keep them still on plantation called affordable housing. Mm -hmm. They raise up the new gang leaders, drug cartel people. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. Just has different names, looks a little different. That's all. We still have sweatshops, laborers, mm -hmm. making your clothes, making your jewelry. Nothing's changed since John Newton's days. But John Newton changed. His conscience was seared, burned, he couldn't see what he was doing was wrong to humanity. But slowly over the years, his conscience, his childhood of hearing about God and love began to wear on him. And it finally got to him. And he got out of the slavery business and became a priest and wrote this. And he said, amazing grace. This, whatever grace was, this love, this forgiveness, how sweet that sound was. That saved a wretch like me. Mm -hmm. I once was lost, but now am found. I was blind. Now I see. Can you say that about yourself? Now we hear testimonies of people. When you're blind, you don't know. Even if you're doing something, you can't see it through the eyes of a God be love or grace. You just see money. Parents will use their children. Slave them out. Human traffic them to get money for them. Pimp them out. Political leaders do that all the time with their own families. Political leaders will do anything to stay in power. So John Newton wrote this when his heart got touched. He said, I was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught me. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. So you have to have this fear, not of death, but fear of being lost. 
fear of not being loved, fear of this mighty God who created the universe, the stars. Mm -hmm. Something has to come in and touch you. And this John Newton said it was something called grace. Grace, and it has love, forgiveness, mercy, compassion. Loves you even though you're evil and wicked. But he has to help you to see yourself, your thoughts, what you're doing. And grace, John Newton said, revealed my fears. Grace can do that. What you're afraid of. Afraid of being poor. Afraid of not being liked. Afraid of death. Afraid of being found out. All of this goes on internally in your spirit and soul. Mm -hmm. This was going on with John Newton. So he was the captain of a slave ship. And he would hear the moanings, the crying of the slaves beneath him in the bottom of the ship. He goes on and says, how precious. Did that grace appear the hour I first believed? Grace will work on you slowly through every circumstance in your dreams, maybe your nightmares, other songs, other people. And then one day, you allow it to touch you when you believe. Believe what? Believe that you can be forgiven. Believe that what you're doing is evil and wicked and not right in the eyes of the God of the stars, the universe. Mm -hmm. And you understand that you are evil and wicked in what you do yourself. You have to believe that, that how you treat your family, maybe you pimp them out for glory, for houses, for money. Maybe you're a politician and you lie and you live two different lives and you treat other politicians as elites and the rest of us as servants. Maybe you've been serving another God, trying to build another kingdom that's not of this earth. So he is saying once he believed in grace, forgiveness, and he allowed his conscience to feel his evil, wicked ways. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. Oh, life had already brought him through many evil things. There were many dangers as a ship captain of a slave ship. He toiled for money and place and Misery, many snares. He said, I've already come through those. And he finally realized it was this grace that had brought him safe this far. Something kept him alive through everything so far. And grace, he learned, would lead him home. Where was home? Home was in the kingdom of heaven that he had heard about, that he would go to after death. He realized grace had been moving in his life because he was starting to see the power of grace working in his life, leading him and guiding him, protecting him, even though he was evil and wicked. See, God wanted something out of this young man, John Newton. Not only did he want John Newton to change his life, but he wanted John Newton to write this song that now many hundreds of years after his death, we can hear what happened to this man, a captain of a slave ship of African slaves, and how grace touched his life changed him 
He's still speaking, even now. He's physically gone home to heaven. But his words that he wrote, his witness and testimony of the amazing power of grace, of love and forgiveness and mercy, are still here for us to understand and study. There's great movies about John Newton. Mm -hmm. You see him working with Wilbur Wilberforce in England to legally end the slavery trade in England. Wilbur Wilberforce was a young man in the British Parliament. And he would go and talk to John Newton. And he worked and did good things in England for God. It took John Newton's story to strengthen Wilbur Wilberforce. And it took Wilbur Wilberforce many, many years of fighting. So John Newton and Wilbur Wilberforce, both in England, way, way back, John Newton helped and supported Wilbur Wilberforce in getting the law changed about human trafficking, slavery, and trade. Slavery was all tied up with trade and economics and business, the new world. And so John Newton's life helped influence, change a nation, be a witness and a testimony to changing laws. So you can too, by one man being touched by amazing grace. And he says, John Newton said, this grace is going to lead me home. Home to what does that mean? That meant back in my spirit to the normal thoughts of my homeland, my king, the place where grace comes from. And upon death, it would help me as I travel through death and on into its land of grace. So you never know that one life, one song, one witness, one testimony can touch another. Wilbur Wilberforce. Great movie called Amazing Grace to watch. And how he, in the realm of politics, changed laws, influenced others. And he worked with the prime minister. Took many, many, many years. And Wilbur Wilberforce had a lot of medical and health issues. But John Newton was right there helping him, strengthening him. Two men who believed in grace and God of the Bible, changed laws, fought, gave their lives to do what was right. So his song, Amazing Grace, goes on and says, the Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secured. So through his word, this hope of having good, not only now in this earthly life, maybe not through physical goodness, but your spirit. John Newton knew that his word brought promise and hope to him spiritually. And in his word, he found promises of good. That after death, goodness would follow him, guide him home to the kingdom of heaven. He will my shield and portion be. John Newton wrote that I no longer needed earthly shields. He was my spiritual shield and protector, and he would be my portion. He was to be my nourishment, my life, everything I needed. His word would give to me. Long as life endures. Well, what did that mean? Just John Newton's life? No. Life is eternal. Spiritual life is eternal. So as long as eternity existed, John Newton knew life would endure. This goodness and mercy, this grace, this shield of protection, even long after he's gone. 
physically of the earth. This grace would provide him with life. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, when death comes, he says, to this physical body, and this mortal life shall cease, I shall possess, own, have within the veil. The veil means beyond the life of the flesh. Beyond that, I will step into a life of joy and peace. John Newton now knew life went on after death. But you had to go through the veil of death itself. And with, on the other side of that veil, you would possess life, eternal joy, grace, peace. And this encouraged and changed the life of John Newton. And he wrote this, and this, his life and his testimony helped Wilbur Wilberforce to change the laws of England to no longer allow the slave trade for business and labor. See, now, mm -hmm. human trafficking, slavery still goes on for business and trade. Humans are money. They produce products. They themselves are the product. Mm -hmm. So even though one form of Legal slavery was changed in England and eventually spread throughout all the world. And the African slave trade ended. Slavery still goes on. Now, how did the African slave trade? The slaves, their own people would sell them. Their kings, their rulers would, slay, would sell them out for money and gold because they were nothing but property to be bought and sold. It was business. Mm -hmm. So slavery is in business, labor, making of goods, having pleasure, making money. And John Newton was a part of that. And slowly over the years, his childhood of knowing of God, a seared conscience came back alive and allowed a grace to touch him. Forgiveness and mercy could come. And he gave up that life of slavery and became a man of God. Wrote this down for us to hear. And then you go watch the movie Amazing Grace with about Wilbur Wilberforce. Excellent to understand how one man's life, even though it was evil and wicked, can be turned around, just like yours. And how your witness and testimony can help others change nations, change laws, and still speak out to us today about the evil and the wickedness of a life without grace and forgiveness, a life that had no hope that mistreated other humans or animals or even the planet. But John Newton shows us the most wickedest, evil person doing horrible things to other people can be reached. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes a childhood first, hearing about this love of God and then going off and becoming a prodigal and going into the land of business and trade and money, evil and wickedness. And your conscience becomes seared. It takes a long time sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't happen to let death's door and people become afraid of going to hell. Mm -hmm. But God is always working at every level, every point in your life to bring his amazing grace forgiveness and mercy into it. So you could, too could be a great witness and a testimony of love, grace, forgiveness, and mercy.
If you would like to turn your life around, like John Newton did, and maybe become one as Wilbur Wilberforce did. And if you want this song called Amazing Grace to reach out and touch you and help your conscience to become unseared, and for you to believe that you can be forgiven and that there is a different way to live, think, and work, and you can make changes to yourself that will affect other people and nations, business, and laws. Accept this gift of amazing grace as John Newton did. Let it forgive you, wash you clean, put a shield up, and then turn from your evil, wicked ways, your thoughts, how you deal with people and nations, and become a true witness and a testimony yourself at the power of amazing grace. Father, all those who want this, who want to become as John Newton, maybe as Wilbur Wilberforce, change nations and laws. Father, help them come into their lives with your amazing grace, your forgiveness and mercy, and help them as you help John Newton. Help them write stories, books, songs, poems, artwork, to give their testimonies of how you and your amazing grace touched them when they first believed. Father, be about your work, Isaiah 61 and 62. Give them a Hebrews 4.12, a spiritual circumcision, as you gave John Newton and Wilbur Wilberforce out of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Reach into business, nations, political leaders, families, parents, teachers, religion. Reach everybody, Father, with your amazing grace and help them to step beyond the veil at death to a life of joy and peace with you. Father, help them to become like John Newton, a powerful man of God. Turn his life around and help them to then influence the young Wilbur Wilberforces, the politicians and leaders, to do what's right, to change nations and laws that amazing grace can be proud of. Father, do your work. Use this man's story, his poem, his song, his life, even now, to reach others. Use Wilbur Wilberforce's tenacity and strength to change what was evil to good. Help nations change, as Britain did, the slave trade. Father, reach down deep to human trafficking, slave into the gangs, prostitution, into the chamber of commerces, the businesses, with Wilbur, Wilbur Force's heart and John Newton of amazing grace. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, I'll see you in the next part of my dear spiritual child letter. See you. It's a land a realm of amazing grace when you believe and you take a step as John Newton did and you step and you let love guide you, not greed, evil, wickedness, ignorance, darkness, not your soul, not the world, not anything, but amazing grace leads you and guides you. Love. Esther Deborah, bye-bye.